misinformation is supposedly one of the greatest threats to democracy. Anthony Albanese seems to think so. Having said so, in a radio interview... You are dictator for five years. <laughs> what do you do? What's your first act? The, well, the big frustrating thing, if I could do something maybe ban social media, uh, would be would, would be handy. Uh, because what, what worries you about social media? Look, I, I think a couple of things. One is uh, keyboard warriors who can anonymously say anything at all and uh, without any fear, the sort of things that they would never say to you face to face. Anthony Albanese was concerned about people saying anything at all on social media. Apparently, it's random individuals that are the threat to democracy. It's why, for example, his government has spearheaded the bill to tackle so-called misinformation and disinformation, empowering ACMA to force social media companies to police what they deem to be misinformation. I've discussed this bill in detail in a prior video, which I'll link to below. But what I want to focus on here is misinformation by the mainstream media, and in particular, recent reporting about the incident in Bondi, which shows us clearly why the misinformation bill is misplaced. Because it turns out that the mainstream media can also spread misinformation, which is probably not a surprise to many of us at all. But this is a major problem, because the proposed legislation would effectively exempt mainstream media from scrutiny, even when the mainstream media itself is saying blatantly wrong things, even when they are blatantly defaming people, as we have seen in multiple law cases. One of which is going to be going through the courts, another one recently came out, where Justice Michael Lee indicated that the media, in particular Network 10 and Lisa Wilkinson, had stated incorrect things about whether there was a government cover-up in relation to Brittany Higgins. And while it appears they won, because Bruce Lehrman was suing in relation to defamation to him, that doesn't exempt them from the misinformation they were spreading about a government cover-up. But nevertheless, let's get back to the Bondi incident. This involved a situation where Joel Couchy murdered six people and stabbed several others. The attack was reprehensible. There is no excusing this attack at all. However, before we knew Joel Couchy was the offender, Seven News had named a completely innocent person, a person named Benjamin Cohen, who happens to be a university student and happens to have been not related at all to this incident. He was not the perpetrator, he was completely innocent. This is a bit of a problem, because Seven News took up rumours about this uncritically, and then put them on a megaphone. They spread them out on their YouTube channel, and then this spread further. Now to Seven's credit, they apologised, and they took down the video. But mud sticks. And if this case were less high profile, people might still be spreading the original false reporting without that correction. After all, people see the original reporting, but they often don't see the apology. They often don't see the correction. They see the original so-called news, but they don't see when it is corrected. Now in this high profile case, people obviously realised, because it was so high profile. But like I've indicated, if it weren't so high profile, maybe things would have turned out differently. And maybe the innocent person who was accused would just be relying on the defamation laws in relation to getting some recompense for this, which could be an incredibly costly and time-consuming exercise. This, of course, reveals several things. First, trolls and social media will spread false information to achieve an agenda. In this case, it was to pretend a Jewish person was a bloodthirsty murderer. Second, the mainstream media can also be just as bad spreading blatantly false information. So say we're looking at the misinformation bill, this is a bit of an issue, because it would effectively deputise social media companies, such as YouTube for example, with monitoring for so-called misinformation. The companies would have to develop and enforce policies and codes to inhibit misinformation, presumably proactively taking down videos that may or may not be misinformation so to speak. The regulator would scrutinise their conduct and would scrutinise their codes there would be penalties for failing to adequately suppress misinformation or for coming up with a sufficiently stringent code. However, there would seemingly not be penalties for suppressing too much information, i.e. if you are suppressing correct information in the cause of suppressing so-called misinformation, there would not be a penalty for that. This would incentivize information suppression. But it gets much 
much worse. Because media companies would not have to scrutinize information from so-called mainstream media outlets. For example, 7 News or 10 News or Lisa Wilkinson would seem. Or indeed from politicians or the government. Their statements would effectively be deemed to be truthful by default. Or put differently, the misinformation on Twitter is bad, but misinformation by the media escapes scrutiny entirely under this legislation, which is a clear issue. Ironically, it would also be a threat to democracy, as it would seem to deem information for the government to be trustworthy, and anyone who questions the government must be scrutinized. That, to my mind, has the whole situation backwards. Surely, we should be distrusting of government and scrutinizing everything they are saying to hold them to account. Given that the Labour and Greens apparatchniks seem to have permeated the bureaucracy, is rather obvious which political narrative would become entrenched, which political narrative would get the airtime and not be critically scrutinized. This ironically would mean that the mainstream media could make a false statement and convince everyone that the statement is true, but then challenging that false narrative would be seen as misinformation. So in this context, if for example a news outlet were to accuse an innocent person of wrongdoing, there might be so-called misinformation to challenge that narrative. It would only be discovered later on that the challenge was in fact correct after the fact. But then you need to go through the whole travail of actually getting the true information out there. The misinformation bill can in fact entrench misinformation when it is picked up by the mainstream media. In this case, Seven News' incompetence shows the problem here. Seven News picked up uncritically a rumour and then ran with it. It appears that they didn't do adequate fact-checking because if they did, they would have realised that this innocent person was not to blame at all. If anything, we should hold the mainstream media to higher standards than random people on Twitter. After all, a random person on Twitter might just be spreading random information that has no basis in reality at all. That is obviously not great, but it is even worse when it is given the imprimatur of legitimacy by a news outlet. We can also see this in the case of the Bruce Lehrman situation. So here, Justice Michael Lee found that on the balance of probabilities, Bruce Lehrman had sexually assaulted Brittany Higgins. However, he also found that the news media, in particular Channel 10, had picked up uncritically the idea that there was some political cover-up in relation to that incident. When it seemed to turn out that all of the politicians involved were actively encouraging Brittany Higgins to go to the police, at least according to Justice Michael Lee. This means they ran with a false narrative about a political cover-up, something that is seemingly going through another separate defamation hearing where Linda Reynolds is suing in relation to the information about that. She's suing about the accusation that she tried to cover up this sexual assault. We can see from all of these defamation cases that the mainstream media can spread false information. And while it is the case that 10 News got lucky, so to speak, in relation to Bruce Lehrman being found on the balance of probabilities to have sexually assaulted Brittany Higgins, that wasn't necessarily because they did proper due diligence. It was because, to some extent, they got lucky. And other areas of their reporting were seemingly very lacking in due diligence, particularly in relation to the whole cover-up accusations. This means that if the mainstream media gets its narrative entrenched and people can't adequately challenge it, then we just end up with more misinformation being spread. And then we have to add on all of the incidents into which ABC has been sued for defamation as well. For example, the Chao Chao Queen incident, where ABC lost rather spectacularly. Or put simply, the mainstream media can and does spread false information. And the fact checkers, such as RMIT Fact Lab, simply, to my mind, cannot be trusted to hold them to account. So what does it mean, therefore, for the proposed misinformation legislation? In short, it means it must be scrapped. The misinformation bill is a travesty. It makes matters worse. The mainstream media and politicians can be just as bad as random members of the public, and in some cases worse, because they are deemed to be more reliable. And therefore, to my mind, they should be held to a higher standard, not a lower standard. What they say should be scrutinized much more than what some individual on Twitter says, because they are holding themselves out to be the reliable conveyors of truth. But do let me know your thoughts about this in the comments below.